All right. Um, welcome uh, back to my um, tutorial on how to make a uh, SNES Pi box. And uh, let me check this camera. I can never tell on this thing. Assuming that's going to be good. <clears throat> Alright, welcome back to my tutorial on how to make a uh, SNES Pie Box. My name is Beak Supreme. Alright, uh, on this arm we'll plug in the hot glue gun. Oh, they already did. Alright, my trip to uh, the store, I purchased these uh, adjustable mirror holders. And uh, they're the the uh, Bulldog brand. If you can, uh, you know what? I'll just get some more light. And, uh, well, it's not working out all that well. So I'll just show you here. There they are. The, the uh, number is PH23. Uh, there, and then the uh, little number up there is 190094. Uh, the, uh, UPC on them is 035-061-900945. And uh, just so you get the uh, right kind. Uh, and for the purpose of this video, if you hear any um, talking that's not me, and if you um, happen to hear any, uh, any people's voices that's not mine, or if you happen to um, hear any music or anything from television, anything from television or music, any copyrighted material, uh, just know that's not me. Uh, I have my computer on, uh, making no sound other than the sound of a fan, and it is uploading the video from earlier today. <clears throat> now, right now it's October 6th at 12, uh, 10 a.m. in the morning. Um, so, uh, it's Saturday morning now, and I'm uploading the video right now onto the BeagleBotics YouTube channel from October 5th, which is just seven hours ago when I was working on it. Okay, I got these mirror mounts. I got, I believe I bought two packages of them. Um, yeah, I did. And right here because they're very useful. Actually, the price of these, the price was a dollar thirty-seven at uh, the uh, Walmart uh, near where I live, and I bought two of these packs. And I was lucky enough to find um, well, this is neon uh, that I got uh, the other day. It's the glow in the dark. Um, orange paint that I've been wanting to get and I'll just go ahead and show you what that's like um, as soon as I get my um, ultraviolet light here um, I have an ultraviolet LED connected and it is uh, 380 nanometers um, that's still long wave uh, that's still long wave ultraviolet but still uh, still gets a good effect oh this is Oh my gosh, this thing's un been unplugged for days, and yet it's still got power in it. Um, and this LED uh, is still picking up the power from that. I'm going to turn this light off. And you can see this thing is unplugged, and it's still got power in there. Um, now I'm going to... Uh, I have to unplug my. Oh no, I don't. Just plug it in this power pack right here. There we go. And use the ultraviolet light. And you can see the uh, hot glue stick will glow a nice pretty color under the black light. Well, ultraviolet light. Um, in case you see that, hot glue is a nice pretty blue color. I really like that. It's a similar kind of a blue color that, um, 
that is done by uh, the quinine that's in uh, tonic water and uh, very similar but this is a little bit deeper blue okay the raspberry pi itself glow is a kind of a green color oh, crap dropped my pretty pie I just dropped my Raspberry Pi. Uh, you can see I've uh, got some fluorescent paint on there. There's some little specks. Um, the Raspberry Pi itself glows kind of a green color under. Um, oh, you can see some of that glow in the dark paint chipped away from the Pi box. Okay, now. Uh, And hot glue, yes, glue is a nice, and this is just plain hot glue, it's nothing special. Um, there's that new paint that I just got at Walmart. Ah, see, here's a nice uh, spot here. Now it glows. And here's a, let's find a dark spot right here. And we'll illuminate it. And now that glows. And now you see it says folk, uh, folk art. And here's a dark spot here. I'm going to illuminate that. And uh, so I'm going to use to paint the inside of my Raspberry Pi with. Uh, cool down my LED. For some reason it gets hot. I guess it's over amping it. Something uh, to make that uh, glow. And now uh, this is. Um, I'm not going to paint the Raspberry Pi. I'm just going to paint the box. This is uh, fluorescent blue. Here's uh, glow in the dark green. And here's my yellow. It's glowing a little bit from the ultraviolet light. I'll make it glow even more. That spot there. And there we go. And my glow in the dark colors. And, uh. Yep. Now I'm unplugging this uh, power supply to my uh, to my ultraviolet light and let's see if it's still got power in it. Yes, it does. Uh, a little bit. It's just weird how that stuff works. All right, let's see how much time is on the camera. I got about 20 minutes. <clears throat> All right, now let's start to get started. Mm. We got three kinds of orange. I got this um, jack o' lantern orange. Um, I wanted to get the glow in the dark orange from the be from the very beginning, but they didn't restock it yet. But then, the other day, <clears throat> a few days ago in early October uh, of 2012, um, I found the uh, fluorescent paint, uh, the fluorescent orange. That was good. That's some progress. And then tonight, I found this... Uh, well, wait. This is a fluorescent orange. I'm sorry. They call it neon. found this a few days ago in, er in early October 2012. Then today, just a few hours ago, about three hours... Um, now about two hours ago at Walmart I found the glow in the dark orange paint which is exactly what I wanted to begin with alright uh, it'd be nice to add glow in the dark blue and glow in the dark purple uh, these are just neon they're, they're fluorescent they're, they're phosphorescent here they um, they um, they glow under um, well they glow under black light only uh, but you know they're okay colors. Now I made a mistake on this right here. This one's a little too short. I mean, I mean it's a little bit too tall. I'm gonna try to cut that away. 
Hopefully I didn't use too much hot glue. And okay, it came off there. Now I need to uh, cut away this hot glue. I don't want to make a mess. Um, do I get my pliers over? No, I don't get my pliers over here. Um, oh yeah, I bought these uh, craft sticks, the jumbo size. Basically going to be uh, uh, I'm going like popsicle sticks, and I'm going to uh, I'm probably going to do three Super Nintendo cartridges high, and or possibly four. I'll go grab some cartridges real quick. Um. I debated on whether I should use three or four cartridges because it depends upon the battery box that I might or might not want to use in my uh, in my pie box project. Um, now keep in mind, I have no music or television running right now. So if you hear the neighbors are playing music in their apartment. It's all silent in my apartment except for the sound of a refrigerator, the sound of my voice, and the sound of a computer which is uploading video to the internet. Now this uh, holds AAA batteries. This battery box is roughly about the height of a Super Nintendo cartridge. So if I decide to hold the batteries inside of the uh, SNES Pi box, I'm going to need at least three cartridges tall of height. And I'll show you what that looks like. Well, it's not going to be exactly like this because i got to cut out part of these tops to fit them all together flush. So what it's going to be more like is it's going to be more like this. Um, that's what two would look like. There's the height there you get from two and that's what my pie box is. And then you add a third and I'm like this because this is how they're going to fit together in terms of height. This will be more accurate. Here's the total height. This will be taken up by the battery box. This will be taken up by the Raspberry Pi, except for might need a little bit of extra room because the Raspberry Pi is going to set a little bit higher inside of here because of the, the this height here. So, <clears throat> and just to make sure there's enough room for the Raspberry Pi, the extra height to ventilate the under the uh, underside of the board. Uh, to accommodate any kind of lighting and a battery box. Uh, I might be able to do it with three cartridges high. I can still fit this underneath my HDTV in terms of the height of the, the, the TV off of the uh, stand. And But to make sure I can fit the battery box and everything in there, I thought about possibly four Super Nintendo cartridges. Now this will cost extra because each, each cartridge cost me about two dollars. This is what the height of four Super Nintendo cartridges would look like right here. You're looking at around three and a half inches. I mean, not exactly, but um, it could be a little bit under four. This would hold the battery box for sure. This would give me enough room for lighting. And then this would be enough room for the Pi. And this should all be ample. I'm, I'm thinking I might do that. Um, I'm not going to cut open these cartridges. Oh, no, no, no. Super Mario All-Stars? No. Super Mario World? Super Mario Kart? Uh, and this is a player's choice million seller with a little gold colored logo. And this is Donkey Kong Country, original from back in 94 in like really good condition that I had from 18 years ago. Uh, so there's no way I'm getting uh, that I'm going to sacrifice those to the uh, project. No. Alright, and keep in mind there is music in the apartment across from me. Uh, I would appreciate if the um, uh, recording, uh, if, if RIAA was like the Recording Industry Association of America or whatever, I would associate if they would keep off my back. Uh, I'm not playing any music at all in this apartment. I cannot control what happens in the other apartment. I can only control what happens here in mine. Uh, it's somebody else in this building, um, so uh, please don't suspect me of doing this. I'm trying to have my apartment as quiet as possible for my project that I'm working on so that my voice can be heard very clearly. I'm not watching any television right now at the moment. The television or music player 
is uh, not on right now. Um, all you can really hear in the background is uh, the sound of that refrigerator running. Um, okay. Um, so I'm cleaning off this. Um, put this extra hot glue. Probably don't cut myself. This is a very sharp knife. Sharpened it myself last year. Oh, and before I forget, oh gosh, look at this. I bought this a few hours ago. Made by Belkin. USB 2.0 printer cable. This is how dumb society is now. And it's just sad. I mean, you look at it. It's, um, there's not enough light. <coughs> you can see. It's just a USB 2.0 cable. Type A male plug, type B. Uh, connects to the device. So I got this to connect my Raspberry Pi to the hub. That's why it's six feet. Otherwise, I could have got a three foot cable. Actually, I got a one foot cable. But I don't think that's going to be long enough. Um, and um, I got several cables. I just think most of them are USB 1.1 from a long time ago. And this is uh, USB 2.0. So this will make sure that uh, everything's all good. This <laughs> is printer cable. That's because people nowadays are stupid. I remember six years ago, six and a half years ago, I was buying a, um, it's just a simple audio cable that um, has a uh, eighth inch, also known as 3.5 millimeter tip ring sleeve, uh, eighth inch stereo jack on one end, and then has two RCA on the other. You use it to connect a small music player up to uh, a stereo. And it's just it's just it's just copper wire with like a stainless steel plug and you know rubber insulation and like plastic uh, sleeve on the uh, jack or whatever. And would you believe that the company manufacturing this um, had the nerve to put a phrase on the packaging that says MP3 compatible. I, I felt so insulted. Uh, MP3 is a compressed audio format, a lossy compressed audio format. I think it uses um, floating point numbers to achieve its compression and blah blah blah, so on and so forth. And because the lossless uh, usually use uh, integers, I believe signed integers. Anyway, so uh, I seen this and I just felt like it was an assault on my intelligence. It's just copper wire with a stainless steel plug and like some rubber and plastic insulation. It just carries an audio signal. It can carry like anything. An MP3 is processed by your device, not by your cable. Of course it's going to hand... This that's like saying this wire here, oh, it can handle alternating current. Of course it can. It can handle direct current. I mean, like, people are so stupid. You know? I mean, like... I mean, it's copper wire. It can handle anything. Pulse code modulation, various different voltage frequencies, and oh my gosh, people are retarded. And anyway, I'm going to shorten this down a little bit. not my music in the background. That's the people in the apartment next door to me. They're the ones playing music. So I feel like I gotta say that. So MPAA or RIAA, the, the music, the movie and music industry, just so they won't be removing my video from YouTube on supposed copyright infringement. I mean, all of this is is my voice 
and the sound of the refrigerator in my apartment, and the sound of this. So there's no copyright infringement on my end or my part, okay? So go pet some. The Dremel melts the plastic. Yeah, it's still sturdy enough. Cut into it a little bit too far. Okay, it's still sturdy enough. Not breaking off yet. Check how much time is on the video. And we'll get a half an hour at a time. Alright, we'll see about gluing this one back onto the uh to the board. I got plenty of these connectors. I'll be able to do what I need to do. Yeah, the neighbors, they just got home like half an hour ago almost. So, uh, well, no, about 40 minutes ago. So they're all loud right now. That's what they do. I guess it'll still be tolerable. It's roughly about the right height. this down with my glue gun. to cool it faster. It's only got like five or so minutes left on this video. And another thing is that I come up with is that um I don't want to have to take another these I don't want to have to take another one of these mirror mounts and make some kind of ugly holding device to hold to hold the Raspberry Pi to the board. So I'm going to take Part of the accessories that comes in this, it comes with these little things here. What I want to do is um, take it and put it in this little hole and uh, snap it in like that, and then the board can't come out. And it doesn't cover very much of the board, and um, 
then you could um, you can just rotate it or turn it or do whatever and then just take the board off so it's more simplistic, looks better and um, so I'm going to hot glue this just a little bit Yeah, I don't know what that is. It better not be a cat trying to jump on my window. That's a sound that thought came from my apartment. I'm not sure. Alright, this hot glue is cooling. <coughs> Got about three minutes. Now, at the store, there's two hot glue guns in this little size. This blue one that I have is the low temperature. Uh, hot glue gun, I don't exactly know the temperature, but it says that this is the low temperature uh, gun. Um, I think the blue, or, um, th this is the blue, but I think the pink was the high temperature gun. But I didn't feel like getting pink. Plus, I don't want to cook anything. And this low temp seems to be doing just fine. Uh, actually, this hot glue gun, uh, this hot glue holds the stuff actually pretty well. So I'm uh, overall satisfied with it. Actually, I could hold the, pi the whole pie box together with this if I really wanted to, but um, I just prefer to use epoxy for some stuff because. Hot glue is cheap and it's great, but it's not sandable. And I'm about out of time. So for the end of this video, I'm uh, Beak Supreme, and this is for the Beaklebotics channel, the uh, Beaklebotics YouTube channel. Today, today is October 6th, 2012. And I'm going to start another one uh, very soon.